Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to start our playthrough of Arkham Horror, The Path to Carcosa with the first scenario, The Curtain Call. Now in the last video in the setup video, I'd asked you guys to let me know about if we think Min should reset her hand or not. Well, due to some changes in schedule, I'm having to record this right after recording my setup video. So I'm not going to be able to take your suggestions, but my guess is that you guys are going to agree with me and that I think I should redraw, do a mulligan. So let's do that first and then we can jump into the playthrough. We have shuffled in her five starting cards from before. Now let's draw again. Okay, we've got mind over matter. We had that last time. We had laboratory assistant. Gosh darn, I swear I shuffled. <laughs> we have, look at what I found. That's three out of the five same cards. Maybe I did not shuffle enough. We have the lantern. Okay, that's new at least. And we have medical techs. Okay, that's not terrible. I actually kind of like what I see here. Since we're both starting in the theater, the first thing that we get to do is read the flavor text and then flip the card over. Must have been one hell of an intermission. <laughs> To say that the theater is in disarray would be a profound understatement. The walls and seats, previously polished to a shine, are cracked and caked with dirt. The curtains are tattered and the set is stained with old blood. You aren't sure what's worse, the smell of rot or the nagging feeling that you've been asleep for a very long time. I wonder how much older we are. Now there's a bunch of different information on these location cards. The first thing is, up top on the left side, it denotes that specific location card's icon. Why that's important is because other cards, if they have that same icon at the bottom, it means that you can travel between those two locations. So for here, you can travel between the theater and the lobby, since the lobby has the yellow icon here and the theater is a yellow location. At the bottom of the card for the theater, we can see that we can get to the lobby, which I just showed you, and we can get to backstage, because the backstage is green, and we have green here. The number over here determines the difficulty of doing an investigation action in this room. Right now, there is a level two of shroud in the theater. If there was any clues here, we would do a skill test, testing our intellect, and we'd have to get a two or higher. Over here, it tells us how many clues are in the theater. Well, there's mostly dead people, so <laughs> they're not giving us a lot of clues. I mean, you know, if we were the county coroner or something like that, maybe that would be helpful because we could do an autopsy. But no, we're just simple investigators. <laughs> not going to be doing any of that. Let's take a quick gander at the round sequence. So in our first round of the game, we skip the mythos phase, so let's ignore it. We start now with our investigation phase. Each investigator takes a turn performing three actions. The different type of actions we can do is draw one card or gain a resource. We can play a card such as an, an event or an asset card from our hand. We can activate any of these abilities that has an arrow that takes an action. We can move, that's going to take an a action. We can investigate, that'll take an action. Fight or engage an enemy, that takes an action. We can even try and evade an enemy. Do note that actions or um, items that have these two icons on, on them, those are considered faster, sort of like these abilities, and they don't count towards actions. So you can do those and still have your three actions. Lastly, there's only certain things that you can do when you are engaged with an enemy. Right now, we don't have any enemies, so we don't have to worry about it. Jenny Barnes will be our lead investigator, so she's going to go first. The first thing that she's going to do is play two cards for two out of her three actions. The first one is our hard knocks. This is going to cost us two of our resources. And don't forget, we started with five, so here's two. And now this will be out. It's considered a talent. So we'll keep it out in our investigator area. And at any time, once per turn, we can spend one resource and we get plus one to our fight or plus one to our agility. Over here, we have our flashlight. Our flashlight also is going to cost two resources to play. We get to place three supplies here. Now, normally when you're playing this without the... Uh, really cool looking tokens from Team Covenant. You would use the resource tokens to also track supplies, but 
I have something different here because I'm crazy. <laughs> so now what we can do is we can spend an action when we have this flashlight and spend one of the supply on here. And when we do our investigate action, we have a minus two shroud in that current location. So let's say there was a clue in the theater right now. Right now we need to get a two or higher when we test our intellect. Well, with this flashlight, we'd actually reduce that shroud to zero. So we would need a zero or higher to succeed. Just so you can see, I have placed this above here in my investigator area, and this is where I'll keep all of our assets and whatnot, and now I only have one resource left. I think for our third and final action, we are going to mosey on over to the lobby. Let's see what we find there. So we'll move over here. Through the tall glass doors leading into the lobby, you can see that this room isn't nearly as dilapidated as the auditorium. Signs promoting the king in yellow taunt you from inside. The wide doors that lead to the streets of Arkham are somehow gone as if they were never there. Forced, when the lobby is revealed, put two of the set aside lobby doorway locations into play at random. Also, we have our shroud at four and we do have one clue in this location. So we'll place a clue token here. We also can spend two actions here and draw three cards if we'd like. Wow, that's really not bad. There are a total of three lobby doorway cards, and we're going to pick two of them. That's really cool. They're finding ways to add replayability to this game. That is so awesome. Okay, so we're going to pick that one and this one. And as you can see, the only way you can get to these is through the lobby, because the lobby itself has that blue arrow. That was Jenny's three actions. So to denote that she has completed her turn, we'll flip her card over and now she's the gray side. That means that she's already done her activation. Now let's move to Min. Poor Min, Jenny just left her in the theater all by herself. So the first thing she's gonna do is play a lantern so she can freaking see, because come on, who wants to be alone in the theater? And then with that, she's also going to pay to bring out her laboratory assistant. Because yeah, she doesn't want to be alone. <laughs> we have an automatic trigger here that after the laboratory assistant enters play, we get to draw two cards. So we'll do that in a second. Also, do you see this icon here? This shows that she is our ally and we can only ever have one ally out at a time per investigator. Now this lantern, you see this hand icon, we have two hands. So one hand is now being used for the lantern. We can play one more card that uses a one hand, but we can't play anything else that's gonna use hands other than that. And we definitely can't play a two-handed card because we already have something in our hands. This lantern will allow us to do an investigate a little bit easier because your location gets one minus one shroud for that investigation. And we can even discard this to deal one damage to an enemy. Now let's draw our two cards thanks to our laboratory assistant. Oh, we have a knife. Nice. And we have overpower. <laughs> we have one more action left, and the question becomes, what do we want to do? We could go ahead and travel to the backstage and reveal a new location, but that means that then we'll have two locations apart from each other in case we need to help each other. And... I think because this is a new location, we don't really know what's going on, we're alone in the theater, we're around corpses, I, th I think as an assistant, we go ahead and follow Jenny into the lobby. And also, uh, she'll be a little bit better, Min will be a little bit better at doing the test to get this clue next round, so I think it's better that we're together anyways. So that's our three actions, and we flip over her card to say she is done with her turn. We have completed phase two, the investigation phase. We'll move to the enemy phase. Enemies with the hunter keyword move towards the nearest investigator, and then each engaged enemy will attack. There's no enemies, so we don't have to worry about that. We now move to the upkeep phase. What we'll do is reset our actions. We'll flip our mini cards. So our little mini cards will go back to the color side. We're ready all exhausted cards. We didn't exhaust any cards. And then each investigator will draw one card and gain one resource. Except for Jenny, she'll gain two. Jenny will gain two resources and then draw this card. Oh yes, Leo De Luca! Except for now we only have three resources, so we're going to have to wait to be able to put him out. But once we do, we get four actions around. Min will gain one resource and then we'll draw a card. Oh no, we have our basic weakness. We feel haunted. 
<laughs> Can you blame her? Totally in a theater, fell asleep. All of a sudden, in a lobby now, things you can't even get away from the place. Don't know what's going on. Yeah. Okay, revelation. Add haunted to your threat area. You get minus one to each of your skills. We can spend two actions to discard this. And not the end of the world, but man, such a bummer when you draw that from your deck. We'll place this weakness right here. After drawing a card and gaining a resource, each investigator checks their hand size. We have to make sure we have only eight or less cards, except for Min. Her hand size is 10. Both okay, so we're good to go. We have completed our first round. Starting round two, we'll start with the Mythos phase. So first, we have to place one Doom on the Agenda card. The Agenda card can hold six Doom tokens before we have to progress through the Agenda. So one, not terrible so far. But then we each have to draw one card from the Encounter deck, starting with Jenny. Let's see what she gets. Oh, Twisted to His Will. Pact. Revelation. If there is no Doom in play, Twisted to Hills gain Surge. Otherwise, test Willpower, where X is the amount of Doom in play. If you fail, discard two cards from your hand at random. Doom in play. I don't think any Doom is in play. I'm honestly not sure about this card. I tried to look it up quick. I, doom in play. I mean, we have one Doom token out on the agenda. So I don't know if that's what it means. Uh, I'm going to say that that is what it means. And we're going to play that I have to test my uh, willpower. Currently, our willpower is at a 3. I don't have any way to adjust it unless I wanted to potentially spend my unexpected courage here because I have those two question mark icons. Those would turn into whichever uh, skill I wanted to, so I could turn it into additional willpower. But I think I have a pretty good chance being I'm at a three. So what I do now for this skill test is I'm at a three, I need to beat a one, and I have to draw one chaos token from the red solo cup. So I'll give it a shake and I will draw one. Are you serious? The time that I draw that is when I don't even need it. That is our success. And it's not a success. I always want to say it's a success token, but it is where you get your special ability. And Jenny's special ab ability is I get plus one for each resource I have. Well, I have three resources, so I just scored a six to a one. Yeah, great. I'm good. Okay, that was not terrible for Jenny. Let's see about Min. And we have Spires of Carcosa. Revelation, attach to your location, then place do two Doom on that location. Well, I think this is just telling me that I played the last card wrong. Bummer. So that means we'll take a step back and we'll pretend that Jenny drew this one because the other one should have had Surge So uh, because there was no Doom anywhere. Uh, sorry about that. This is the one bad thing about playing this, and I haven't played it before. Sometimes I might not interpret a card correctly. So this says here, if there's no Doom on the attached location, you'll discard the Spires of Carcosa. Investigate. If you succeed, instead of discovering clues here, remove one Doom from this attached location. Oh, that's terrible. So I'm going to have to place two Doom, and we're going to have to do two investigations just to get rid of the Doom tokens before we can get the clue token. We'll place the Doom token here. Now you can see this denotes two versus one, okay? So there are two Doom tokens here, and we're going to attach this card to the lobby. I might just leave that clue and see if I can find some other ones. I don't want to have to do three investigate actions just to get one clue. Okay, so that was still just Jenny. Now we'll move to Min. Sorry about that. Let's see what Min finds. Twisted to his will. <laughs> We just saw this card. If there's no Doom in play, there is, okay? Otherwise, you have to test uh, your willpower. Oh, great. Her willpower is four. We're going to be having a two here because there are two Doom tokens. So it's two, and we have four as our beginning stat. So let's see what we can do. We have our cup here. We're right now up four to two, and we'll grab this one. Minus two. Okay. Okay. That means we're at two to two, ties, we still win. So we're okay, we don't have to discard any cards. Now that we have finally completed the Mythos phase, let's move to the Investigation phase. Jenny is our lead investigator. Now technically, you guys, you don't have to start with Jenny. Every time you start, the lead investigator doesn't have to be the one that begins the round. They just are the lead investigator for the entire scenario. 
I'm going to start with Jenny just because I'd like to. <laughs> so we're going to have Jenny say, see you to the lobby, because we're not going to deal with those doom tokens. We're going to move to one of these two lobby doorways. Let's move to this one. And it says, an ornate wooden door leads into one of the front areas of the theater. We have found the box office. Raindrops pelt your clothing as you step into the box office. It takes you a moment before you remember you purchased your tickets indoors and you realize it's somehow raining through the roof of the hall. Hmm. We can do an action here to gain five resources. And remember that you stole from the box office. That's once per game we can do that. Oh man, that's tempting. Uh, do we want to do that? Five resources would be fantastic. We could get Luca out. Uh, come on. I mean, it's not going to hurt us, right? <laughs> you know we're going to get in trouble. Okay, so if we do that, which we're totally going to do it, we're going to do that as an action two. That's going to cost us nothing, actually. That's just an action. So we'll gain three plus two because, you know, she is a resource hog. She'd see some cash. Yeah, she would totally go for it. I mean, come on. So we'll grab five resources. Perfect. I now have to remember that we stole from the box office. Also, what kind of stinks is if you look here, there are no clues here. Ah, that's annoying. For our third and final action, I'm going to use six of these lovely resources. So we only have two left, but we're going to bring out Leo De Luca. Then that means now, going forward, and including this turn, we have an additional action. So we still have one more action. I think our final action is kind of a no-brainer. We're stuck in this box office. There's now nothing else that we can do here. And we can't go to the other lobby doorway because remember, there's a blue uh, arrow here or a triangle. So the only location we can go to is back to the lobby. So that's what we're going to do. That will end Jenny's turn. Moving to Min's turn, the first thing we're going to do is discard Hunt Haunted by using two actions. Kind of stinks, but I really don't want to have minus one on all of our skills. Our second action will be we'll move to this lobby doorway, the new one. And we'll flip it over. And I shouldn't say our second. This is our third because that took two to get rid of Haunted. Here we have Lighting Box. At the top of a narrow, claustrophobic staircase, you find the lighting crew's closet-like booth stationed above the balcony. Expensive lighting equipment and several heavy spotlights dominate the cramped room. While you're in the lighting box, increase the resource cost of each card in your hand by two. Whoa! That means it's going to be expensive to play any cards. Ugh. But there are two clues here. Nice. Our shroud level is four, so that's kind of high. But you guys, you see this victory icon right here? This is how we can level up between campaigns. And I shouldn't say campaigns, I mean scenarios. So at the end of this scenario, we'll count up all of our victory points and then we can use them to buy cards into our deck. Really cool, I love this part of this game. But in order to get this victory icon from one of the locations, you have to clear it of all of the clues. But yeah, I think we can take care of this with our lantern. Heck yeah. Unfortunately, though, that was all three of our actions. Yeah, we're not doing much right now. It's a little slow going at first, but you know, we're slowly exploring. We don't want things to surprise us too much. <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. So we've both activated. We'll now move to the enemy phase. There's no enemies, so we can skip by that and go right to the upkeep phase, which means we'll refresh our mini cards will each draw a card and gain one or two resources if we're Jenny. Jenny is going to go from two resources to four resources, and Min's going to go from two resources to three resources. Jenny will draw, ooh, a 45 automatic. Nice. Ooh, that'll be cool. She does still have one hand open. And let's see, what is Min going to draw? Oh, her special card, the analytical mind. You better believe we're putting that out. We've ended our second turn. We'll now start turn three. First thing that we'll do is we'll put another doom token on the agenda. Now we'll have each of our investigators draw one card from the encounter deck. We'll start with Jenny. Jenny finds dissonant voices. Revelation, put dissonant voices into play in your threat area. You, not, you cannot play assets or events. At the end of the round, you can discard this. Ugh, yeah, whatever we're hearing, it's distracting us. That's annoying. Okay, then for uh, Ning, we're going to find a swarm of rats. 
Well, look at this. We have our first enemy. Okay. First of all, it's a creature enemy. It has the hunter keyword. So if this ever had spawned in a location or maybe we evaded it and there's no investigator in that location, during the enemy phase, it would actually hunt and try and find the closest investigator. This middle number right here tells us how much health it has. This over here tells us its fight value. So when we are trying to do a fight test, we're trying to exceed or equal that number. And if we're trying to evade them, this is their evade number, a three. So the rats are really hard to evade, but they're really easy to kill and they only have one health. Down here, this is the weirdest thing. I still think it's weird where they put this, but down over here, this tells us how many damage and what type of damage this enemy does. So this enemy just does one point of physical damage. Now, because we are spawning this card from an encounter draw, this card will automatically be engaged with me right away. Some cards, though, will have a spawning requirement. It'll say where they're going to spawn. So make sure to look for that and they'll make sure that you follow that first. But if you don't have that, whoever drew that enemy is going to have that enemy engaged with them. So although Ming is here in the lighting box, these rats, we're not going to place them here. We're actually going to place them in her threat area, which will essentially be right above her assets and allies. Now we'll move to the investigation phase and we'll start with Jenny. First thing Jenny's going to do is she knows that Ming is not the best at attacking and Ming has those rats on her. So what she's going to do is spend one action to move up into the lighting box. From here, she's going to do a fight action. Now, what she could do is first do an engage action where she engages that swarm of rats and then she could fight them. Why you might want to do that is whenever you fight an enemy that's engaged with one of your other investigators, if I fail at my fight test, I actually do the damage to the investigator instead. But if I do that engage action, I'm wasting one of my actions or using it. I'm going to take the chance because I think we're going to be able to succeed against those rats. For this second action, Jenny's also going to use her hard knocks. She's going to spend one resource to get plus one to her attack this round or her fight. So her total fight normally is three. We're going to add plus one to that is four. Now we're technically in that lighting box, which requires all cards in hand to be a uh, two cost higher, but this card is already out. We're not playing it. So I don't have to pay any additional to use it. So now let's draw one chaos token from the cup. And we get, a, oh, a skull. A skull in this scenario under the easy or standard is a minus one. Minus three if you had three or more horror on us. Well, we don't have any horror yet. So it's just a minus one. We have a three. We totally succeeded. We have defeated these swarm of rats. So we can place them in the discard pile. For action three, I think we're going to use our flashlight and try and do an investigate action. So you can see here, spend one supply. Okay, this is for action three. We'll do an investigate and your location gets minus two shroud. So right now, the shroud here is four. We're subtracting two from that to make that a two. And our total intellect to do this investigation is three. So we're up by one. This is a little bit risky, but hey, let's see if we can do it. We'll grab our cup again, give him a good shake, and we'll reveal this one. Oh, it's the plus one, the only plus one that's there. Awesome. We just obtained our first clue. Nice. Why I like these trays so much from Team Covenant is they've got a place you can put all of your little miscellaneous tokens over here. And then when you take damage in a horror, you're going to be putting them up here. I'm hoping I won't even show you, but I probably will because we're probably going to get hurt at some point. <laughs> well, what do you guys think? We were successful there. It's a little bit risky and we're wasting our flashlight usage. But I mean, what else are we going to do with one more action since we do get our fourth action thanks to Leo? So let's do one more investigation. Currently, we're up three to two. Let's give these a good shake and we'll reveal this one. Are you serious? I will totally take that. <laughs> I think I need to shuffle those up a little more. Another plus one. Well, I'm going to take it this time, but I'll make sure to give this a good shuffle. We'll now flip Jenny to the exhausted side to show that she has completed her turn and we will get one victory point at the end of the round that we can use to level up our decks. Yeah. After Ming just watched Jenny take out some rats, 
find two clues. She's feeling invigorated. And you know what she's going to say? Let's get this done. I need to find some more clues. I need to show my boss I can do this. So she's going to take one action, move back to the lobby. And she's going to use action two to move over here into the back stage. The set is different from what you remember of the play's first act, decorated with a backdrop of an unsettling sunset. When backstage is revealed, put two of the set-aside backstage doorway locations into play at random. While you are at backstage, each hidden treachery in your hand counts as three cards instead of one for the purpose of counting your hand size. I'm assuming we'll figure out what that is when we draw it. <laughs> and there is one clue here. And look at the shroud is only three. Not bad. We'll also go ahead and grab three of these backstage doorway cards, and we'll pick this one and this one to put into play. Ming has one more action, and I think we're going to try and find this clue. Ming has her lantern here, so she can do her investigate. Your location gets minus one shroud for this investigation, so instead of it being a three, it's only a two. Her intellect is at a four, so we're going to do a comparison of four to two. You see where that plus one is? I'm going to make sure to shake that baby up so it doesn't just pop up again. You don't look, think I'm cheating. I'm going to give it a big shake. Okay, we're going to grab this one. That is just a minus one. Totally no problem. Three to a two. We've gained our third clue. We move to the enemy phase, but there are no enemies on the board, so we can move right to the upkeep phase. Jenny will gain two more resources to have a total of five, and Ming will gain one resource to have a total of four. Nice. Then we'll each draw one card. Oh, emergency cash. More resources. <laughs> oh, I love Jenny. And then we have unexpected courage for Ming. So far, we really haven't used any of these to increase our skills, but we haven't needed to. But I have a feeling that will happen soon. Also, don't forget, at the end of the round, we get to discard dissonant voices. Thank goodness, no longer is Jenny hearing someone talking in her head. To start the mythos phase for the next round, first we will place a doom token on the agenda. That's our third one. We'll now have Jenny draw her encounter card. And, oh, she gets an enemy, a fanatic. This is a humanoid cultist. Now it has a spawn effect, so it needs to be spawned in a certain location. Reveal location with the most clues. After Fnatic enters play, move one clue from Fnatic's location to Fnatic. Force, when you defeat Fnatic, take control of all of its clues. Oh, cool. The Fnatic does have two health. He's a little bit harder to defeat. You got to get a three or higher, and he's kind of hard to run away from. He's got a three for agility. He only does one point of damage, though, so he's not that strong. Well, you know what the place is with the most clues? It's the lobby. <laughs> awesome. So remember how we weren't even going to be able to try and get that clue because we'd have to get through these doom tokens? Not anymore. All we got to do is defeat this fanatic and we would get that clue. That is one full lobby. We've got a fanatic and we've got something to Carcosa. Yeah. Wow. And doom tokens and a clue token. <laughs> okay. Ming, let's see what you encounter. You encounter the rotting remains. I remember this one. Revelation, test your willpower three. For each point you fail, take one horror. So my willpower is four, but I don't particularly want to take horror at this stage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Unexpected Courage. To do this, I am now gaining two of any skill type. So I'm gaining two willpower. So my willpower is six. But read this. After an investigator at your location commits a card to a skill test, that card gains one additional question mark icon. So I actually am doing this for a total of seven. Four plus three is seven. Okay, pretty much the only thing that would really kill us is if we got that automatic fail. And we got a minus four. <laughs> four and three, yep, seven. We still just barely got that because we needed it to be a three or higher. We had a total of seven minus four is three. Wow, that was just a perfect time to draw that minus four. Moving to the investigation phase, Jenny would really like to play her 45 automatic, but she's in that lightning box. Because she's in that lightning box, all cards in her hand have an increase in cost by two. So her first action is going to be to gain one resource, which is a bummer. But now we have three, four, five, six. 
action two, we're going to pay all six of these resources to put out our 45 automatic. The 45 automatic has a total of four ammo. After that ammo is spent, yeah, we no longer have the gun. But what we can do for an action is we can spend one of these ammos, fight, we get plus one to our fight value, and that fight value. Uh, attack deals plus one damage because normally no matter what even if we win a fight skill test let's say we win it by five we still only do one point of damage but this card will allow us to do two points of damage we've done two actions our third action we're going to move from the lighting box back to the lobby now since we're in the lobby and there's an enemy there and the enemy is not aloof that enemy will automatically engage jenny so we'll grab that fanatic and he goes blah, 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 blah. Who is that? <laughs> He's going to come and attack Jenny. Now, I said the Fanatic is going to attack Jenny. That's not 100% true. The enemies only attack during the enemy phase or if they have the retaliate keyword. This enemy does not have the retaliate keyword, so will only attack during the enemy phase. And Jenny is hoping that she can take him out right here. So she's going to spend one ammo with her 45 automatic, and she's going to try and shoot this Fanatic. Her fight value normally is a three. That's going to add plus one to the automatic, so she's at a four. She's trying to get a three or higher, and then if she does, she'll do two points of damage and claim this clue token. She would like to succeed at this, so she's also going to play her unexpected courage. She walks into the lobby. She hears someone's there. She sees the fanatic, pulls out the gun, and shoots it. This is a six to three skill test. Feeling pretty good. That minus four better not show up. And we have a minus one. Perfect. Jenny the crack shot aimed well, hit the fanatic, hit him so well, took out his two health, and she claims this clue. That's clue number four. We only need two more clues. That was her fourth action, so we will exhaust Jenny. Ming heard a shot from the lobby, and you know what? Although that could have been Jenny, <laughs> she's not going to go in there. She's not stupid. She doesn't have fighting skills. Instead, she's going to check out one of these backstage doorways. Get a little farther away from that action, right? So let's do this one. A simple wooden door leads into the back of the theater, far from the prying eyes of patrons. We have the trap room. Clearly, nobody has cleaned out the prep area beneath the stage in months. Forced, after you reveal the trap room, search the encounter deck and discard pile for one copy of a swarm of rats. We just got rid of a swarm of rats, and you know what? They're coming right back. I grabbed them right from the discard pile. They're going to be engaged with me. The good thing is, there are two clues in this location. One times the amount of investigators. And it's not really that hard to get at a shroud level of three, but we've got to deal with the rats first. To take out these rats, we are going to have to use one of our skill cards, and that is our overpower. This will give us plus two to our uh, fight value, but don't forget, it's a skill card that we're playing in our area. We also get one question mark, so we'll actually add three. So three plus our two is five, five to one. We should be able to take out these rats. Come on, Red Solo Cup, you haven't let us down yet. Let's see, we'll grab this one. That is a plus one. <laughs> nice. Yeah, those rats were probably dying. They didn't have much health left anyways. So this overpower card says that if your test is successful, you get to draw one card. So let's draw the top card of her deck. And she now has perception in her hand. Great. Now that we took care of those pesky rats, I think our final action is we're gonna try and claim one of these clue tokens. The total shroud value is three, but we're gonna use our lantern, so it's only a two. And we have a total of four for our intellect. I'm gonna take the chance. Four to a two. We'll make sure to shuffle these up a lot. There we go. We'll grab this one. Oh, that is the automatic fail. Doesn't even matter that we are winning in points or in numbers, doesn't matter at all. We automatically failed did not get that clue well there's still no enemies out so we don't have to worry about the enemies phase we'll move right on to the upkeep phase jenny will gain two resources and min will gain one to make her total of five yeah poor jenny only has two because we used all of them to get out that blasted 45 automatic then we'll each draw a card 
and we have the blackjack. Oh, cool, except for right now, both of our hands are busy with a flashlight and a 45 automatic, but that flashlight's almost used up. Then we can put this out for Jenny. And Ming, let's see, she has another perception. She is very perceptive today. All right, I think we can do one more round and we'll call it a video. So first thing that happens in the mythos phase, we now have four doom tokens here. Two more and we move past this third act. We'll start with Jenny for drawing from the encounter deck. And we have the agent of the king. Oh, this doesn't look good. Four health, holy moly, pray. Most clues, well that would be Jenny. Jenny has three and Ming only has one, which is hilarious. It's a hunter. Forced, after Agent of the King attacks you, move one of your clues to the Agent of the King. Forced, when you defeat Agent of the King, take control of all of his clues. And this has a victory one. Boy, and he attacks you for one health and two sanity or horror damage. Jeez, this guy is rough. And he is on Jenny right now. He just came out of the lobby. Probably came out of the front door. I don't know. Man. Okay, let's see. What's Ming going to deal with? Ming has whispers in your head, anxiety, peril, and hidden. Oh, hidden is one of the new keywords for this specific um, scenario set. Revelation, secretly add whispers in your head to your hand. You cannot trigger these fast abilities. You can spend two actions to discard whisper in your head from your hand. Oh man, so it just clogs up your hand and we cannot do this type of action. Okay, that stinks. Okay, you guys, for Jenny's first action, I think she's going to try and evade this Agent of the King, because who wants to be around him anyways? <laughs> so to do that, we have to check what our um, agility is. Our agility is three. The Agent of the King's uh, agility cost is two. So right now we're beating him by one, but we are going to draw a Chaos token. So I think I'm going to play or use my Hard Knocks and use one of the two resources I have to add plus one to our agility. So now we're at four to his two. Four to two. Let's see what the red um, cup gives us. A minus two. That's two to two. We have tied. We still break engagement. When you break engagement with an enemy, the enemy goes back into the location and is exhausted. At the end, uh, during that enemy phase, normally when the enemies activate, they'll just unexhaust. So fortunately <laughs> for uh, Jenny, she was able to escape. Now, action two, what she's going to do is gain one more resource. So she has two, because then we're gonna play and use both of these resources, her two resources, and with those two resources, she's going to play Sneak Attack. Deal two damage to an exhausted enemy at your location. Yeah, two damage, don't mind if I do. He is already half health. Now that the Agent of the King is not engaged with Jenny, she is going to take one chance with Action 3. She is going to use her 45 automatic add plus one to her attack so her attack is at four she's also going to discard blackjack just to add plus one to her skill so she has a total of five and we're going to see if we can take out that agent because she'll do two points of damage and that would be just enough to take him out but we will have to spend one of her ammo to do this okay it's a five to four test here so this is going to be tight. We really need a zero or a plus one. <laughs> that is a plus one. Yes, that is a plus one. Oh my gosh, Jenny and her 45. She has just taken out two people with that. And you can see this has a victory one. We'll place that in the victory pile and we'll gain another experience because of that. Nice. If I'm counting right, one to disengage, two to use the sneak attack, three to attack with a 45 automatic, four, her fourth activation then, will be going to the balcony. A carpeted staircase leads up into the balcony. Somewhere, a hot draft is blowing down through the steep passageway. To your disappointment, the balcony sections are much like the ground floor below, although every now and then you think you spot a figure moving silently in the aisles. Forced, after you perform a move action during which you move from the balcony to the theater, take two damage. Ugh. Well, we can still go through the lobby, so I guess we'll just go through the lobby instead of trying to go to the theater. But we do have two clues here, and if we could get those, that'd be more victory points. I love it! 
That will definitely be the end of Jenny's turn. That was a very, very successful turn. I am quite happy. For Ming's turn, I think we're going to try and get the last two clue tokens. So remember, this is only a two because she has her lantern, she'll investigate, and she has a total of four intellect. So four to two. We'll grab our red solo cup again, give it a shake. Four to two, four to two. Let's see. Minus one. We still got it. Nice. Okay, that was action one. Let's do it again for action two. Let's grab this one right here. Oh, nice! We get a plus one, and then if we'd committed any cards to that skill test, we get it back to our hand. But we didn't, so that doesn't really help us. But we do get another clue token. Nope, not a supply. Clue token. There we go. And now before Ming takes her third action, we are going to, because this is a free action, we're going to give up our six clues that we have here so that we can progress through the act. One, two, three, four, five, and six. A shadow creeps along the wall beside you and your heart leaps into your throat. <gasps> You turn, and a figure flits away just out of sight. Either your mind is playing tricks on you, or someone else is in the theater. You follow the, dir the direction of the shadow, rounding a nearby corner. At the far end of the hall, he stands, awaiting you. A man in an elegant black suit, his face covered by a pale mask. Though his attire has changed, you instantly recognize him as the actor who played the role of the stranger, one of the characters from The King in Yellow. He turns and disappears through an open doorway, as if taunting you to follow. Choose one of the set-aside locations at random. Put that location into play and spawn the set-aside Man in the Pallid Mask enemy at that location, instead of its normal spawn location. Advance to one of the three copies of Act 2A at random. Remove the other two copies of Act 2 from the game without looking at them. Oh, see? This is so cool! They're totally adding replayability to this game. I love it! Here are the two locations that we have not been able to go to because we didn't pick them. So I'll shuffle them up. My eyes are closed. And we're going to grab this one. So that is the backstage doorway. We'll then spawn the man in the pallid mask here in this location. Here are the three 2A cards. And I guess we're going to pick this middle one. Sure. The mysterious stranger from the King in Yellow might know something about what happened during the intermission. You must find and confront him if you are able to discover the truth. Objective. When the man in the pallid mask would be discarded from play, advance. Okay, so we don't need any more clues right now. You can see that's a dash. We're not going to be able to use clues to advance the game. We're going to have to instead defeat that man in the pallid mask. Okay, well that was fun. Ming's final activation then will be to move back to the backstage here because that is mean that means she's only one space away from the mask dude, the stranger guy, and he doesn't have hunt on his card, so he's not going to move from there. He's just going to chill there. So we can maybe wait for Jenny to come over there and then go and attack him together. Next, during the enemy activation phase, that enemy that's out, the man with the mask, the stranger, does not move, and there's nobody in there, so he's not going to attack anybody. So then we move to gaining resources and drawing a card. So Jenny will gain her two resources, which is good because she's totally out, and she will draw one card, and she gets, oh, her twin 45s! She already has one 45, but when that's used up, she can maybe use that. And then Ming over here will gain one resource. That'll actually put her to a total of six resources. She's been holding on to a lot of cards. And will uh, gain working um, a hunch. Ming has a total of nine cards in her hand. But she does have her laboratory assistant, so her hand size has been increased by two to ten instead of eight. However, she is in the backstage and any sort of whisper in your head card or hidden card in your hand is considered three cards instead of one. So she has nine plus two more because it's considered three instead of one. So that's 11 and her hand size is only 10. And I'm assuming she can't just discard this card. So we're going to discard knife from her hand. So she does not have too many cards in her hand. We have now ended the round. Before we start the next round, I think I'm going to call the video here. 
That way, if I did make any errors, we can catch them up before we start the next section. But so far, I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, we only have four Doom tokens on the third act, and we're already into, or the 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 third act, yeah. And then on the act cards, we're already on the second set. So that feels really good. Please do let me know if I did anything wrong in the comments below. I'll make sure to put on subtitles, and then I'll also mention it in the next video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you at the next stop.